Hey guys, uh, today we're just going to go over some of the myths and facts about solar, um, especially in the Alberta and Canadian market. So uh, first thing I want to bring up that a lot of people ask me on the door or throughout a presentation, and they'll say it right away where they're like, you know, it doesn't make sense in Canada. We, uh, we don't have enough sunlight in the wintertime. You know, we don't get a lot of sun in general. All this stuff and information that's just miseducation. So at the end of the day, looking at Alberta especially, just so you guys know, we're one of the top 10 sunniest places in the world. Um, we're one of the sunniest places in North America. And when you're looking at areas like Calgary and Alberta, we actually get 2,300 to 2,400 hours of daylight every single year. Now, the difference is, is that we have really long summer months. So we get all of our daylight in the summertime and we get not as much daylight in the wintertime. So the reason people think that solar doesn't make sense is because they think, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to have enough power in the wintertime to actually make it through the day. What they don't understand and what has created it to be a lot easier in Alberta to do solar is net metering. So now what they've done is we get all this sunlight in the summertime. You're producing almost double what you're using. And what happens is, is that that power gets sold back to the grid to allow us to have a credit on our bill to pay off the energy in the wintertime. So even though we get all this daylight in the summertime, now it doesn't matter because we can just sell our power back to the grid and then buy our power back in the wintertime. And our goal as a company is to make sure that you guys are sitting at a net zero bill at the end of the year. You might still have a few fees of like admin or distribution, but a very minor, minor fee at the end of the year. But in general, we're looking to eliminate that energy bill altogether, okay? Now, the other myth and fact that people get about Canada is the wintertime bringing snow. People always ask me, how does snow actually affect the panels? What does it do? So the first thing you need to realize is that colder climates are actually good for a solar panel. So you need to know that a solar panel is similar to a computer. If it's at 40 degrees Celsius for a long amount of time, it's gonna now lose efficiency at a quicker rate. Where if we can keep that cool, just like a computer and its fan, it's gonna produce energy at a higher rate. So when a lot of people think that cold is bad for panels, it actually does increase the efficiency of those panels so they can produce at a better rate. The other thing is, is Nate did a study that showed a 3% loss over the course of the year with snow on top of the panels. Now that 3% loss is because when you're looking at the time that the snow is on there, it's between your months of November to March. Now between November and March, if you actually look at the graph that we give you that shows you how much energy you're producing, you're going to notice that in those four months, that's only 15% of your total energy production. Now, if you take 15% of your energy production, and even if you lost all four months, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but that's not the case. You get snow on your panels maybe for a week, a month at most. And if you're looking at 15%, that's a very, very low amount of energy lost. If you got snow in the summertime when you're producing 16, 17, 18 hours of daylight per or uh, hours of daylight, then we would look at that as being a big concern if you had snow on the panels, but obviously it's not going to happen. One of the biggest arguments I think or things I would have said to me with especially Alberta's market is what about the oil and gas industry? If we took the same amount of land that a solar field used and we built a gas power plant, we'd produce more energy. Now, whether that's true or not, at the end of the day, especially in the residential market, the thing people need to understand is we're not taking up more real estate. What we're doing is we're taking the real estate that you guys already have and putting it solar panels on the roof on that real estate that's already claimed. Now, what did people do with a roof? Nothing, right? What are the benefits to this? Well, you get free power after you're done paying off your solar system. You guys can lock in your rates and guarantee that your price isn't gonna go up in the future. And at the end of the day, you could make profits at the end of the year if you guys produced enough power. So there's a lot of benefits with it and it's using real estate that you're never going to actually do. The other thing that a solar panel will help you out with is it'll protect your roof. The two major things that damage your roof is the sunlight because it's made out of tar and the water because it gets rid of all your actual asphalt. Now, if you have asphalt shingles and use solar panels on top of those asphalt shingles, well, they're gonna be in the sunniest places of your roof. So those areas of your roof that curl up quicker and start to get impacted a lot more by the rain are now gonna be protected and then the other side of your roof that doesn't get impacted as much by the sun or rain 
is now going to be still open, which means that you're now going to have a lot longer lifespan on your roof where that 25, 30, 35 year roof will now become 40 to 50 years because it's protected by these solar panels.